this isn't for everybody and i and i understand that this isn't for everybody and uh i i do promise having varied stuff in the beginning uh, down the road again uh, i like keeping it kind of random with the stuff that i do but this is a focus of mine because how, of how important it is to me and how passionate i am about it and i think this is like a, a calling for me to get this information out it's just like all the other bs that we're all surrounded by every day uh indoctrinated by just completely blind and oblivious to what's going on and uh, this is just one other aspect of that mind control uh, that, that we're all being susceptible to. Welcome to Johnny Arcade. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and deep dive a little bit further into Mr. Mo. Um, as per my previous video, again, I really want to make it clear that although sometimes the material I will be covering may be dark, it may be disturbing, um, it might just be darn right evil sometimes, not necessarily with Mo, but just in general with where I see this going. And uh, I just, I want you all to know that I want to bring a little bit of humor to the situation, try to bring a little bit, lighten the subject up a little bit in uh, certain ways that I know how, and um, I may completely fail at that, and that's fine, I'll learn from it. Uh, but I just want you to understand, like this stuff is there, and we can be ignorant that it is there, and just go on with our lives and, and whatnot, um, but then we don't see what the repercussions of those things are. I'd rather you be aware of it, um, and then do with it as you will, uh, take it and run with it or, or you know just but use discernment use discernment on everything I say don't take it as gospel don't take my word for it I don't know why you would uh, I'm just putting it out there do your own research and the point of this video is entirely for you to do your own research I was basically doing my own research on this particular gentleman just to make sure that the stuff that I was I was putting out there that uh, I'm not just throwing this guy under a bus I don't want to demonize this guy. I think he does a, a good job of doing that on his own with his work. And um, again, no judgment. I'm just, this stood out to me and continues to, and because uh, I can see the patterns. I see the patterns and it's disturbing. So no judgment, no negativity. I'm just gonna show you some articles that I found that will maybe help you further understand where I'm coming from on this. And a lot of these articles are actually promoting his work and um, not so much criticizing it, but um, you know, praising him for it. Because he's, he's done a lot of work, he's, been, he's a hard working man, he's got a lot done and he's got some really good stuff too. But the stuff that I'm finding, the, the award winning stuff, uh, the, the commonly found stuff, the stuff I found in my own uh, children's book collection for my son uh, happen to be some of these very popular books that I think uh, whether or not the intention is to help children deal with certain situations of childhood that maybe Mo himself, I have a feeling that maybe Mo himself had to deal with some of these things and this was his way of, of going through it and um, for him to become a strong, successful uh, adult after having gone through what God only knows what he may have gone through. Um, kudos, kudos to you. Uh, the only thing, the only thing that I find uh, negative about all of this stuff is the potential to maybe harm children. And and again, I had some of these books in my possession, unbeknownst to me that this information was in it. And I put a stop to reading it to my kid. I don't want him to not know that it exists either. Maybe when the time comes, we can talk about why we don't read Knuffle Bunny anymore or the Pigeon Books anymore. But um, it, it's kind of like with anything. Anything can be used for good or for bad. A glass of water it could be used to, to quench your thirst and keep you healthy and clean yourself, keep yourself clean and, and clean other things and, uh, and to relax. It can also be used to drown someone. It could also be turned into ice and you could knock someone over the head with it or stab someone with it. Again, that's bad and I'm not advocating that anyone do that, but it is a possibility. And that's something taking as simple and innocent as water. Um, 
you could apply the same thing with uh, with quite literally a rock, a gun, a sword. It can be used to defend. It can be used to attack. It, it really just depends on the hands uh, who are possessing the, the item or the material. So with that being said, I just want to reassure you guys that I'm not just looking into this too far because uh, there are multiple throughout the years, many years, um, interviews and 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 articles written on this gentleman and um, that in, in his own words, in other people's words, basically point out the same thing I'm pointing out. They just don't see it as disturbing. And then some articles that I think uh, do kind of paint it as a little disturbing. So I just want to bring these articles to your attention. I'll post, I'll see if I can post links to them. I don't know if that will help jeopardize my video at all from being taken down, but I will post the links to these articles so you can quickly access them for your access them for yourself in the description in the description below. Okay, so without further ado, let's get on right into it. What do you say? Okay, so first article. This was the first article I found. Uh, it popped up at the top of you know, Google search, what very, this is the longest, most extensive and thorough, I'd say article out of all of them, probably being that it's on encyclopedia.com. So when you go down here and it's, it's under, if you were to go to just encyclopedia.com, it's under children, academic and educational journals. And then Mo Willems has his own little section. Um, I won't be diving specifically into any of these, but you've got an introduction where he was from, uh, growing up, uh, they touched base a little bit on his childhood, but more about him, his um, his accolades, his success, his his kind of growth from where he started um, from childhood into kickstarting his career and all the success he's had from there. Uh, there's lists of like his works and standout efforts that he's done, um, as well as like author reviews, book reviews. It's all kind of compiled into this one article. And this is uh, up to, I believe, 2005. So there's still a, a nice huge gap of, of work that he has accomplished since then that um, whether it's good and or bad, um, this only covers a slight portion, but very good place to start. Uh, also covers some of his little more obscure uh, books that are maybe not as popular as some of the series he's created. I just wanted to show you here. Uh, this is kind of where it started for me when I dove down this rabbit hole. And again, the only reason for the I'm not just trying. I'm not trying to find dirt. I'm not trying to demonize this guy or or villainize this guy. I'm just trying to show you that the stuff that I found is a little bit disturbing. And all this does is kind of reassure me that I'm not just nuts, okay? So I'd suggest that if you're questioning anything that I'm saying, uh, see for yourself, take a look at these articles. Uh, the second link I wanna show you is from Google Sites. So google.com uh, has their own little database of websites and in there, Mo Willems has his own author and illustrator um, resources site page with biographical information, which a lot of that's probably copied and pasted from from or to the encyclopedia.com. You've got his awards and honors. Here, we can click on these. Um, so yeah, you got some biographical information. It's just a paragraph there. Awards and honors. They go into, you know, the specific books and the honor awards he's had, such as the uh, Caldecott honors. Um, he's got from what I understand, Emmy Awards. Yes, he's won several ASIFA East Awards for his Susie Kabluzi uh, mini cartoons on Sesame Street. I would suggest checking those out too. That's some of his early work and it's uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. But I, I've always loved Sesame Street. Again, one thing that uh, uh, I, I definitely can't say I, I've accomplished. I've definitely supported Sesame Street a lot throughout the years and with my son. My son loves some Cookie Monster and some Elmo. Um, so yeah, so his awards, accolades, and then, uh, his bibliography. This is also a nice little section that, and I did read into all of these articles, but these are basically articles that Mo is providing on his own site. So he's going to be, you know, these are going to be painting a positive picture 
of his work, which by all means, you know, that's, that's why we do it, right? So he's got a nice little uh, list of resources here and then additional information on books by the author. And then you can see, this is a very good place to kind of get an idea of, you know, the Pigeon series, Nuffle Bunny series, uh, Elephant and Piggy series, and all of these I've found to be, I uh, have questionable content. We'll get into that at some point. Um, who is that? So this, the cat, the cat the Cat, who is that? I picked up one or two of these just to check them out. Haven't read them yet. Can't say. And again, I'm not trying to nitpick. I'm just trying to not even prove a point. I, I just, I found this. It's there. It's like, you know, the, the room is dark and we assume it's safe. I turned on the light and it's like, whoa, there, there's a few bear traps in here you need to watch out for. So that's all I'm saying is I'm, I'm bringing light to the darkness. And again, use discernment. Do with it, take it from it what you will. And uh, my whole point is that if I knew about some of this stuff early on, I wouldn't have susceptible my child to this information. And so I think if uh, some of you parents uh, were educated on this information too, or just not even educated, just had this brought to your attention that maybe uh, you'll make a different choice on book selection for your kids as well. And maybe, again, just when you go to the library or you're just, instead of just grabbing a book because it's got a cute title, never judge a book by its cover, right? That for good or bad. So if it looks innocent and, and silly and fun, open the book and just, and just breeze through it before you go gifting it or, or reading it to your own children. It's all I'm saying. It's all I'm saying. Do you do diligence as a good parent or teacher or caregiver or babysitter or whatever, older sibling, uh, before you go, just unknowingly, who knows? Who knows what kind of detrimental effect this can have on the mentality of children is all I'm saying. And with uh, suicides and everything up right now with COVID and everything else, uh, I just, I'm trying to contribute to the positive side of that and actually help kids. And like I said, not that these books don't necessarily help certain individuals, but when they're blasted out and praised and then uh, you be the judge. I, I don't want to judge anyone. I'm judging the material, the, the information. I'm putting it out there for you to do with as you will. Use the sermon, uh, just, you know, there's, what is it, cognitive dissonance that is sweeping the nation right now. And it's just because people are, are either oblivious to this or they don't want to see it. They don't want to see it. So they just turn a blind eye to it. And then that snowball grows, you know, and uh, whether or not you like it. So just try to put uh, this to light because I'm not trying to burn. But again, I'm not like Hitler or Nazis. I don't want to destroy the books. They're there. They're done. Uh, Let's be aware of what they contain, okay? So we can make good decisions as parents. This other article I'd like to bring up um, is from WBUR.org. I don't, I'm not really familiar with this website, but it, it came up. It's an article interview. It's an interview with Mo by this gentleman, uh, Greg Cook, uh, about some, he had just released a few new books, one of them being called Don't Pigeonhole Me which is a, like a bio, an autobiography, I believe. Um, let's see, just so that I'm not misquoting. Yeah, Don't Pigeonhole Me, Collecting Two Decades of Sketchbook Zines. So, okay, so there's like little sketchbook things that he's submitted to you know, different publishers or whatever. Um, I just found it ironic that his book is called Don't Pigeonhole Me. The article of this interview is called don't pigeonhole him. An interview with kids book author Mo Willems. Um, what is pigeonholing? And it's funny because, you know, he's got the pigeon series. This picture, silly Mo, you got a pigeon on your head. That's a, that's a pretty dope picture. I ain't gonna lie. He's got a pigeon on his head. What is pigeonholing? Why would one be accused of pigeonholing? Why would someone not want to be pigeonholed? Um, this is Wikipedia. Just pulling up the definition and some examples of pigeonholing. You know what I mean? Got to, got to do my due diligence as a researcher to make sure I'm not just pulling stuff out of the hat. I need to have source. I need to have evidence. I got to have resources 
to, to fall back on. Pigeonholing is a process that attempts to classify disparate entities into a limited number of categories, usually mutually exclusive ones. The term usually carries connotations of criticism, implying that the classification scheme referred to inadequately reflects the entities being sorted or that it is based on stereotypes. So dividing into different stereotypes. He doesn't want to be stereotyped in any way, shape, or form. Um, when you say don't pigeonhole me. When considering various classification schemes, one must be aware of the following pitfalls. Okay, Bullet points. Using categories that are poorly defined, for example, because they are subjective. Entities may be suited to more than one category. Example, rhubarb is both poisonous and edible. Entities may not fit into any available category. Example, asking somebody from Washington, D.C. which state they live in. That's like a paradox, right? Like confusion beyond, con it's an unanswerable question. Entities may change over time, so they no longer fit the category in which they have been placed. Example, certain species of fish may change from male to female during their life. Isn't that ironic? We're talking about gender when we're talking about pigeonholing and identifying as one or the other when it may not. Again, whole nother rabbit hole for a whole nother day that I personally don't really even want to touch on. Attempting to dis discretize properties that would be better viewed as a continuum must be taken with caution. Example, while sorting people into introverted and extroverted, one must keep in mind that most people exhibit both traits to some degree. That's the hypocrisy thing, right? Like the things that we do that annoy us that other people do, do we not, are we not guilty of doing them ourselves, right? So, um, hypocriticism. An example of pigeonholing in everyday conversation occurs when a person making an, an apolitical or barely political comment is assumed to have certain political belief. Without ascertaining their political stance, such an erroneous designation is especially erroneous when assigning it to people who live in places where the right-wing, left-wing dichotomy is not present. So, and then we got, see also archetype labeling, pigeonhole principle, typecasting or acting so again we're he doesn't want to be labeled he so it sounds like he's got a message of don't label people you know we shouldn't we should not be identifying them or assume a certain category that they fall in based on looks or beliefs or how they're raised color of their skin which we can all agree you know we're all equal right we're all created equal no one is above or below any other individual we're all sovereign souls. We've all been given free will by God to, to do with as do whatever we want. Whether those things that we do are good or bad, that's up to you and God. That's where your moral compass needs to stay accurate. And uh, that's something that people work on throughout their lives. Um, I'm continuing to calibrate mine and keep it accurate. Keep it accurate. Sometimes it falls off. So again, pigeonholing. Um, because I don't want to attack anyone by judgment or anything like that. That's not what this is. I'm just taking the details, expanding them so that they make a little bit more sense. Now back to the article about don't pigeonhole Mo. He doesn't want to be pigeonholed. Um, let's see if we can pull a couple inserts from this. I want you guys to read this, not just me, but let's touch on a couple of the questions. So tell me about the pigeon. He's just so much desire and so much frustration. This is the the interviewee asking the or interviewer asking Mo about the pigeon books, the pigeon character in particular. He's the pigeon. The fact that the fact is first name, the fact is his first name is the. That should tell you enough about who he is and where he thinks his place in the world is. So without saying it outright. It sounds like he's saying that, and again, I'm not, I don't want to assume, I don't want to do exactly what he's saying he doesn't like people doing, but the way he's wording this in one paragraph, saying that the, the pigeon, tell me about the pigeon, because he's so full of desire and frustration, well, that's, first of all, he's just a pigeon, he's not a, 
Don't assume he's a male pigeon. Don't assume he's a female pigeon. He's the pigeon. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll admit, I thought it was a boy. I thought it was a boy. Uh, just because, just because the, the way the book is written, I mean, it doesn't tell one way or the other, but shame on me. Shame on me for assuming that, right, is what we're getting at. So it's like, now I'm being pigeonholed in this category of of uh, just, a, what, a bigot that shame on me for judging someone by their look or whatever. This is exactly my point, is if we're supposed to all be all-encompassing, all in loving then why do we even go there with this? Uh, he just wanted to know more about the pigeon and how he created it. And he decided to emphasize on the fact that it's the pigeon. Your parents came from Holland. Reading your books, I wondered if part of what we're seeing is a Dutch humor. Is there a Dutch humor? There's definitely a Dutch humor. The Dutch language is essentially German for funny people. Absolutely, the Dutch love British humor. There are a lot of crossovers there. Dutch humor can be fairly sharp. Our Christmas tradition is you buy everybody a gift that insults them. Then you write a poem about their flaws and make them open up the insulting gift. That's what we do for Christmas. I would certainly say that I grew up in an environment, particularly when I was in Holland, where you had to be quick and witty or else you would be destroyed. So that's kind of... That, Changing it up, people keeping it spicy so that their, their family gatherings are fun. And although I would love to participate in something like that, like an improv game or something, uh, just a fun little game night and do something like that. Uh, but to, we're talking about Christmas, we're talking about a celebration of the supposed birth of Jesus based on our Julian calendar and, and what, what we all know about that, but um, which is a sacred uh, tradition for, for some people. Uh, a sacred day for some people and it's like I, I don't want to assume that you maybe this is just a wholesome thing that you guys do and, and get a kick out of and maybe it's just what you you do in Holland for fun around the holidays uh, but I find it a little disturbing You're like humiliating and ridiculing the people that you love and who knows if they bring over extended family that's got to be an interesting uh, gathering Te personally and this is just my opinion for Christmas, whether you believe in God or not, or Jesus or not, or whatever, uh, maybe you just celebrate gifts. Maybe you you celebrate winter solstice or, or Father Christmas or or what have you. You know, um, when I get a gift for someone, whether it's their birthday or for out of the goodness of my heart, or they achieve something, I I tend to try to give it a little bit of meaning or feeling. Maybe it's something that. I had in common with that person or something that reminds me of that person or individual or that family so that they know that it was a heartfelt gift and not just something on uh, the five dollar section because you had to get them a gift you know what i'm saying like i think a card with just words in it would have a lot more meaning than going out just buying junk that they may or may not like or a gift card that they may or may not use the 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 thought is nice um but you know Put a little love in it, but that's kind of like a strange love. Uh, but again, I'm not not judging, putting it out there, pointing it out. Uh, can you talk about your interest in be beginning readers? Okay, so again, a lot of his books are geared towards young adults. I, I mean, not young adults, very young children, toddlers, and that whole very absorbent, very, that's when they're like, becoming who they are you know what I mean those first like eight or nine years of life is like you're a sponge and you're absorbing in all the good and all the bad and and, and trying to make sense of it with what little intellect you have um we have infinite intellect but you know as a kid you only have so much information being given to you which is why I think the information that's given to them is it's so precious that we make sure that what we give them is is wholesome um or at least attempt at being, or real. Being real is cool too, which I think is his whole point, his whole, his whole approach. Um, but the, there's, there's still the, the innocence. For me, it's about the loss of innocence for children, protecting that innocence. There's a time and a place, and when these kids get to a certain age, you want to introduce, you know, sexuality or violence or just how cruel the world could be, uh, which seems to be like a theme with these particular books. Um, the, cross that bridge when you come to it. You know what I mean? Uh, again, my opinion. 
but if, if this was the stuff they were teaching my kid at, at his school, I'd be pulling them out of there faster than you could say, um, faster than you can say, I, I don't know, I can't think of anything, but, uh, but I pull them out of there right away. I'll tell you that right now. Um, early readers are extraordinarily challenging. Before I was doing Elephant and Piggy, early readers, I was writing picture books almost entirely. And the great thing about picture books is you're writing for illiterates. So that means you can use really big words because there's somebody else. There's the orchestra reading this for the audience. But once you get to an early reader, you're really limited. And that challenge is very fun. Each of these books usually has only 40 to 50 unique words. And I vet them all. And I check them. I try to make sure they're monosyllable. Every now and then, again, two or three syllables get in. So it's a great puzzle. How do you create emotion and frustration and anger and joy with ev with these very, very simple words? Again, he's literally saying that these kids are illiterate because they're at such a young, tender age, but it gives him the opportunity to use the reader to get these things across. He tries to keep it simple so they can absorb it by using monosyllable words like the, and, dog, cat, uh, jump, sit, and... Um, and he vets them to make sure that it's how he wants it. And then at the same time, in the same sentence with the same breath, um, he's saying that it's a great puzzle. Asking himself, how do I create emotion, frustration, anger, and joy? Um, with very, very simple words. So he's, he's admitting that he's trying to encourage these emotions, these feelings within a kid that, I mean, they don't know what they want. They, sometimes they do. And, and, and I love when I'm learning more and more with my own son to listen to him instead of just telling him what to do and do this, do that. Because then that becomes their whole life is just taking orders, you know, uh, if they're upset, you know, I like to sit down and ask myself, what's going on? And, and sometimes he's still very young, so he has a hard time putting words together. And knowing that, I use the vocabulary that he is capable of using and try to relate with him on, a, on that level. And sometimes you just get the silent treatment, and that's fine. It's, it's a matter of learning through their body language and their physical language, uh, audible language what it is that they really want or need and, and there's times where yeah as an as an adult you still need to discipline them if they're if they're demonstrating bad behavior that you don't want them to portray and who who judges that bad behavior who, who determines whether or not that's good or bad behavior you do as a parent because you are responsible for that child in their early age until they reach adulthood okay so if you're not able to go out and buy cigarettes or vote for a president or sign up for the military, there are certain things that a, a, a guardian or a parent is going to need to step up and make that decision on their own. I mean, I think we can all agree on that. But again, to each their own, you know, we all have free will. But yeah, how do you create emotion, frustration, anger, and joy in a board book, in a picture book for children? Okay, not angry, I'm just passionate, all right? So I'm just trying to <laughs> make this as light as possible considering what we're talking about. Um, you talk about the difficulty of doing early readers. What do you care about doing early readers in the first place? Why do you care about doing early readers in the first place? Part of it really was I had been told by all sorts of authors and people I respected, picture books are hard, but early readers that's as hard as it gets. There's an element of because it's there. I also think it's a fantastic time in your life when you're starting to decode. A lot of things happen. You start to lose a lot of your memory. That faculty of being able to remember everything disappears as you start to read because you don't need to remember everything because you can get it somewhere else. You can access it if you want to. It also means a great degree of independence. One of the things that's important to me is that my books are played out, not just read. So I wanted to be in dialogue so that younger readers could read a real book, even if they're only reading one character. So that is, so that's the transition. I saw that with my own daughter when she was learning to read. I would have to take some of the lines and she would get some of the lines and it would be built up that way. But it wasn't natural in the books. 
But here mom or dad can say, I'll be elephant, you be piggy. You're working together, but you still have an accomplishment of finishing a real book. It's 64 circles, it's 56 pages, it's massive. Um, it's kind of all over the place, but it, it sounds like for him, it's an opportunity to teach their children. He does mention his daughter in this particular paragraph. Uh, we'll skip Elephant and Piggy. I don't know too much about it yet. I, I've read a few. Uh, we will be touching base on those, but I don't want to deep dive on something I don't know too much about. Um, I love this one because I have this book. We will read this book. On the one hand, your most recent pigeon book, The Duckling Gets a Cookie, 2012, is teaching manners to the pigeon and to the reader. But it's also about the revelation that the duckling is playing the angles. What's that about? So the guy asking the question saw what I saw, that although there is a message in here that the, the, the duckling is trying to like teach the pigeon manners, he definitely like pulls one on him. And uh, like, what is that gonna teach in your kid to do that same thing, to be the duckling? Because he, he, he appears as kind and giving and caring when really he just, he didn't want that cookie. He says, oatmeal raisin. He wanted a chocolate chip, or no, it had nuts in it. It was a chocolate chip cookie with nuts. And so he, the pigeon's freaking out. Where'd you get this cookie? We'll go, we'll go more into deep, but I'm just kind of give you a heads up why this guy's asking this. What's up with that? Uh, the duckling totally pulled a fast one on the pigeon. You, this is Mo's response. You are now asking questions that are beyond me. And the answer to all these questions is going to be the same. We live in a sick, sick world. So his response to what's up with the duckling, like pulling a fast one on the pigeon, when supposedly this book is about teaching manners, and he, he's, he's answering with a non-answer. Why would he answer this question? It's only gonna get you in trouble. But his answer is, you know, it, it's beyond me. And the answer to all those, that question a million times over is, we live in a sick, sick world. So it's like, why are you trying to open that Pandora's box of this sick, sick world? And I, again, this is why I'm doing this, because I don't want it to look like we're in this sick, sick world and, and we're all doomed and there's nothing we can do about it. There absolutely is something we can do about it. We can apply positive things and, and, and contradict these things with love and light versus sick, sick world. Um, again, it's, it, it's his words, not mine. Um, We'll let you we'll skip through some of this so that you guys can find it too so that was another um article to him so this one i found to be this was like my my little gold nugget here and the fact that it's a new york times magazine interview uh it's like whoa uh, dude also kind of looks like my father-in-law in that picture which is a whole other story mo willems has a message for parents He's not on your side. And this is from November of 2020. So this is relatively recent. Um, I'll let you get into the meat and potatoes on this. I just want to touch base on a couple paragraphs. One question that the uh, interviewer had was, uh, if childhood is difficult, how's middle age? Mo's response was, don't send me back to my childhood, exclamation mark. Don't send me back to my childhood. I communicate better now. I've been with the love of my life for a quarter century. I love my kid. My kid is a person. My dream from the time I was probably seven or eight was to be 50. That was my goal. So again, Mo, I, I don't know what you went through as a kid and uh, you know, God bless you for making it through your journey. And uh, you know, when you're seven or eight, like my whole thing is like, I love, like I'll, I'll never grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. And there's a lot of kids these days that already don't even know what Toys R Us is because it's not gonna be around anymore. It's gone, it's gone forever. But I'm still that kid who has a bunch of action figures and movie posters and cartoons and comics hung up on my wall, you know, video games. I, I love it. Like I love being, feeling young, 40 years young. You know what I mean? Like I, I just wanna get younger. And uh, I love, there's so many things about my childhood that I love and, and, I, and I know I'm probably blessed and I, not everyone has that, that blessing of being raised that way. But part of my thing is protecting kids' innocence, you know, enjoying those young, those young days, those years, because they don't last forever. And uh, once you become an adult, 
it, it's just the same old nine to five working check to check that whole debt slavery system that we get indoctrinated into and and whatever else comes along with religions and, and everything else that again to each their own culture family love however it is you share that with you and your family um i always say to each their own we all have free will um but my thing is let's protect the innocence of these children let's let's keep them children not necessarily like dumb them down and keep them and make them stupid like talk to them like a human being yes absolutely but there are certain things that we should probably that it would be considered i believe inappropriate for for children of a certain age to understand some of what life has to offer later on in life um, why would a seven-year-old want to be 50 that was just always my goal but you have to accept that you are where you are like whatever it is that's the kind of that's kind of what it is it's probably not going to get a lot better probably not going to get a lot worse but i mean nobody said to me you're going to be struggling as an artist for x number of years and then it's going to work out when you're younger you wake up and you work you don't know if anyone's even going to see it you don't even have a space to do it in now i have a drawing table i press a button and the light turns on and i can trace things i have that accessible to me at any time. I get to dress weird. I get to have long hair. I'm going to get a tattoo. People say, how are you going to feel when you're old and you have that thing? I'm already old. So it's like, uh, again, I just reiterate, let's protect the, the kids. You know, this is kind of funny because I love Dr. Seuss and Corduroy. Uh, here, there's this idea, which is probably a fantasy that the children's books we love like Corduroy or Dr. Seuss have a net positive moral effect on the world. What do you think? And that's me. I'm all about morality, moral compass, choosing right from wrong, and, 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 and you know, be, not being a little a-hole all the time, you know? Just being respectful, polite, kind, not because you need to conform and that's what everyone's doing, but because just to be a, a good, positive human being contributing to humanity and those around you, um, I think is, is generally a, a good thing. Um, that line of thinking is a cop-out. That's the same thing as saying, children are our future. Screw the future. We're the present. It's our job to be better human beings. I'm going to give my kids something good to read, and maybe later they'll solve the world's problems. But excuse me while I get back on my phone. That is frankly offensive. If you want your kid to be a better human, the way to do it is to be a better human. There's a time in every kid's life when they're still drawing every day and playing basketball every day. Then there's a day when they stop drawing and keep playing basketball. They keep playing basketball because their parents do and their parents don't draw. At some point they're like, they can't be cool because my parents don't do it. You don't think you're cool, but if your kid says, dad, will you play with me? And you say, not now, I'm drawing. That kid is going to start drawing because that's cool to them. This is like a double-edged sword paradoxical nightmare that it's like do i even want to touch on this because i will be attacked regardless of however i respond to this um but my like the children are our future screw the future we're the present like the children are our future like not that i'm worried about what the world's going to be like when i'm old and people are taking care of me hopefully i have people taking care of me if i did a good job growing up then I should definitely have people wanting to help assist me in my living at an older age. Um, but what's wrong with gearing your kid up for the future? That's what school, that's what books are for. To prepare them for the real world. And it's like you're contradicting yourself and what you do by saying a statement like that. And then you're pigeonholing, by the way, parents who the, a kid wants to draw and play basketball. And then it's like all of a sudden... They don't want it. What they don't want to do drawing. Why is that automatically like the 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 fun youthful thing? I draw. I love drawing. I'm I'm consider myself to be a half decent artist, and uh, and I like to go play sports and, and throw the ball around with my son as well. To think that one day that you're gonna assume that one day is gonna I'm gonna reach this point where I don't want to play the ball or I don't want to draw because something else is important, and then that's taking away my son's innocence and his childhood like behavior. And it's gonna make him want to sit on a computer and work or go out and talk to contractors because that's what daddy does and that's cool. Like if anything, 
I stay cool by doing stuff that my kid's into. And then it's something we can relate on and enjoy together, such as cartoons or animated shorts or, or films or books, children's books. Uh, I like, instead of trying to make him older, I try to retain my youth and stay youthful. And he does a very good job of bringing that out of me, my son. And uh, yeah, to think though that you automatically assume that everyone just goes and turns to their phone and ignores their kid. Like, I agree, that's a problem we have today and we need to address it. We don't address it by slapping people in the face and telling them that they're doing this and then assume that pigeonhole every single father figure into thinking that that's what, the, that's how people react. Not everyone is like that. Not everyone is like that. Uh, oh, your son has grown up now. Does he still inspire your work? I know he used to. So he referred to his kid as a kid. He had a kid. He loves his kid. Uh, in the previous article, he referred to his daughter. Uh, in the encyclopedia.com article, they say that Mo Willems had, is married to blah, 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 and they had one daughter, uh, Beatrice yeah. Willems. Um, and again, I'm not trying to demonize anyone, villainize anyone. I don't like judging people based on their beliefs, their looks, their, um, I base people on their actions, you know, again, whether they're right or wrong based on my moral compass. But even then, like, it's not up to me to judge, you know, um, sexuality, religion, beliefs, whatever it may be. Um, I've got a lot of friends who are gay, lesbian, uh, homosexual. Um, whether or not you agree with it or whether or not you accept it, like that's their choice. You know what I mean? Um, they have that free will too, by all means. Now, when you're an adult and you want to make a decision like that, by all means, you have the ability to do that. God gave you that, whether you believe in God or not, like you've got that God given right to free will to do with as you want. And so if, if that means a sex change or, a uh, uh, sexual orientation change or just the, how you identify yourself you want to you know you feel that you're a cat you want to identify as a cat and have whiskers implanted in your face knock yourself out now what i do have a problem in again is protecting the, the innocence of children so should i'm not saying they do but should any book by any author or illustrator try to promote this confusion promote this anxiety promote this frustration, sexual frustration, not knowing uh, identity frustration in your kid and create that hot mess of a ball that they're going to struggle with for their whole life because of a silly book that had you just not read that book or followed that book up with another book that was wholesome or did have moral something in it um, that you're leaving a positive, again, what two people might think is a positive thing might be completely different as well. So maybe that's his intention is doing something positive. But my whole thing is I'm not going to choose voluntarily to allow my son or my daughter or whatever to be susceptible to this, like, like sex in schools and stuff like that, sexual education. Uh, it's one thing to, like I said, when they're reaching that preteen age and they're going to start seeing this thing or things are happening to their body as they enter puberty and they're wondering, Daddy, why is this happening to my body? Why do I feel like this? Um, that time will come. But why would you want to teach children about oral sex and sexual activity and homosexuality and transgenderism and gender identity when they're at such a precious young age when, you know, it's one thing if they walk in on mom and dad, you know, having intimate relations. It's another thing if you're like having your teacher teach them about it in school in an environment that should be loving, caring, you know, uh, you know tapping into their abilities, finding it out, finding out what those individuals, sorry, I had an alarm go off, but finding out what we're all good at as individuals and then tapping into that, focusing on it so that they can build on it and, and build character and, and become whatever it is that God sent them here to do. Um, yeah, you just, I don't want to create confusion in my kid. There's enough confusing stuff going on in life. Why would I want to instill more confusion? Um, I don't know. Um, let's see. 
You don't speak to your parents, given the fact that you're someone who personally has thought a fair bit about the connection between kids and parents. Have your thoughts about the emotional expectations of the parent-child relationship evolved over time? He has a very short response to that very large question. Do you see your children as living human beings separate from you? The uh, interviewer says, very much so. His response is, then you're fine. I am estranged from my parents. A lot of it is personal. But when I started to see some of the harmful behavior that had happened to me starting to be moved over to my child by them, that was the line. There's no good that can come out of saying more about it. So he's estranged from his parents. He doesn't want to talk about his childhood. We see eye to eye on this. <clears throat> it's personal, but when he started to see some of the harmful behavior that had happened to him when he was a child, that was the bottom line. Well, those are the things I'm seeing in these books that you're writing is like, I don't want those behaviors in my child. So like you disagreed with how your parents raised you and I don't know your parents. I don't know what that household was like. I don't want to judge you or your parents. But this is my whole point is exactly what you're saying. We, we agree. We don't want people, anybody influencing our kids in a neg And when I say negative way, negatively opposing what we believe to be true and wholesome as our individual selves, as parents. You picking up what I'm putting down because I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. I agree with you, Mo. And the things I'm finding in the books, those are things that I see my child displaying and reenacting. And with a smile on his face, he loves the pigeon. He loves the pigeon books. He thinks they're silly. But I'm so tired of my son telling me no and telling me that he doesn't want to be quiet and that he doesn't want to go to bed and coming up with excuses not to go to bed. And it, 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 it becomes this huge thing. It's exhausting to me. And, and then I have to try to undo these behaviors because the book's been read to him so many times by his teachers and his parents that it's now instilled in there. And it's got, now you've got to deprogram it. So I'm with you, Mo. But it's like, that's what you're doing to my kid. And again, not a personal attack. I'm just, you're one of many. There's so many books. It's just, it's crazy to me that that through all these books, and I'm not just saying this, like, I'm doing my research, okay? I'm doing my research. I just, I, I like to be thorough. Sometimes I'm, I'm overly thorough. But it's like, this, this is my same concern. We're all, we have the same concern, bro. Maybe we should collab and try to come together and, and, and produce something that we both agree is wholesome. Hits both sides of the spectrum doesn't raise a bunch of punks and uh, let's create that love environment that it sounds like we both want so bad. I have a couple questions for my five-year-old if that's okay. She's a fan. First off, why do your, why don't your books have princesses? His response was democracy. I, again, don't assume I'm Republican because I laughed at that because we wouldn't want to pigeonhole John now, would we? And I'm not Republican just to clarify so uh haha shame on you if you assumed so new york times uh magazine interview uh i thought this was a great read um now i wanted to i don't want to dive into tricks i don't want to put a spotlight on any one of these people uh good or bad okay and i don't again tricks is tricks willems is is an adult I don't know how old she is now, but I believe she, I believe they are an adult and are capable of making their own decisions. And so whether or not Mo had anything to do with how they feel that person felt growing up and making those choices, I don't know. But I mean, it, I think it's safe to assume that due to this, the way that he parented that... The, what I'm getting at is this is where it gets touchy. And that's why I'm having a hard time coming up with words because I don't want to offend anyone. I definitely don't want to offend Trix or Mo or or anyone who has had similar life uh, experiences and decisions. Um, but I pointed out earlier, 
one article said that Mo had a daughter. Another one, he's talking about his kid and how she this and she that and her youth. Then um, we talked about the pigeon. We kind of segued into the pigeon not having a gender, identifying as the pigeon. Um, and shame on you for assuming one or the other. He's quite literally considered his daughter a she and, and then uh, later on discusses his son and how he, uh, and if you read the articles I showed you, talks about how his son had a hard time growing up realizing that he was queer and then later on, um, his words, uh, finding that his son was trans. So um, again, with all due respect, I respect Trix and what she does it, or what what he does I'm not doing that to be funny I'm, I'm not that was a slip up on my part I from what I understand from what I've researched Trix Williams identifies as a male and so out of respect for Trix I will consider Trix a male um, for the sake of this video I, I hope I'm coming from a place of love and people can see that I'm I'm attempting to come from a place of balance and, and fairness and not duality, but accepting everyone for who they are. Okay. So Trix has, Trix has her, his own website, his own, he looks like he's established in this industry. Um, check out the website, trixwillems.com. Looks like he's a speaker, goes around speaking uh, speaking as someone who heard many speakers over the course of my high school career i know how impactful a speaker can be that's why i love being a resource to others sharing my knowledge and letting a whole room ponder ideas together i hope that through my presentations i can make the idea of transgender people a little less foreign and leave everyone thinking about how they can become the most authentic and fulfilled version of them of themselves okay Here's some pictures of Trix on stage, doing his thing, speaking at an assembly at the Williston Northampton School. Topics, gender identity, authenticity, identity, and gender euphoria. Uh, so she's got a whole thing here, GIVS.org. Looks like he helps people identify themselves to what it is you know whether that's pigeonholing or the opposite uh, it, it's it's don't you just find it weird that we're tippy toeing around all this it's like so contradictory so hypocritical things i'm saying things they're saying it's like this you see what i mean this cycle this double-edged sword this catch-22 it's like what can you do that's why i just want to send love light forgiveness thankfulness to everybody to everybody um let God sort them out. But I just, uh, and I don't want to feel sorry for anybody either because it's like, because you know, like who am I to feel sorry for anyone? Like these are life choices and, and this might be a very happy fit. It sounds like Mo and Trix have a very close relationship. Father, son, father, daughter at one time. Like, like that's all I care about is love, you know? So Again, it's like a touchy subject. It's like I, I want to. I'm just enjoying the snow, but it's about to be an avalanche. It's like I'm just. You're just having a good swim, and it's. You look below the surface, and it's shark infested waters. You know, so it's like, I don't know that. So check out, Trix Willems. Uh, she, he's got some incredible art on here. I looked through a lot of this too. It looks like he does some voice acting and stuff, and. Uh, and here's Trix up close. Good looking individual. Bio available upon request. Um, and then of course contact. So he can reach out and get more info. Maybe he'll be speaking at a university near you or something. And, uh, again, to each their own. Just want to point this out that these are some of the concerns I have. And here's proof of exactly what I'm afraid of. For, for my particular kid, you know what I mean? And uh, because like like he said in that article before, like I don't, I don't want this positively or negatively influencing my kid at such a young age. When the time comes, we can discuss it. Um, 
but but thank you thank you for bringing it to my attention or you didn't bring it to my attention i brought it to my attention because it stood out but just i i don't know thank thank you i just don't want to come off as not thankful for having found this out because it's like a, a whole new world it's like a whole new world and i look at the library and children's books in general in a whole different light so i want to bring one last article to light this was this article was like linked in another one of the previous so you'll eventually come across one of these too um but yeah this is reed roger i'm not familiar with reed roger it sounds like they they credit they they do um critiquing on books uh reviews and stuff like that this is hbook.com um this one's called reed roger the horn book editors rants and raves this particular article is called you may be a boy but hey um you base i'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty because i want you guys to read this if any of this stuff is concerning to you or we're on the same page and you're like i want to read that article he's talking about this one dives into gender identity with the pigeon okay uh that was i didn't even know that was a thing i was just worried about the, the context within the book and the text itself and the message it's portraying i didn't even think about the gender thing this article is what brought that to light for me. And um, he basically touches base on the pigeon and how a lot of people assume that the pigeon is a boy, like I did. And then he's basically saying, shame on you. You shouldn't think that way, blah, 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 blah. And here's why, and, and here are all these other examples. Talk about pigeonholing, not pigeonholing. All you're doing, Mr. Roger Sutton, is pigeonholing people. So shame on you. It's like the same thing that they are accusing people of, they are guilty of themselves. Hypocrite, hypocritical 101. It's, it's uh, again, I'm not throwing this guy under the bus because I love all these people. I love everyone. I want people to learn from this. Learn from this exchange of, of perspectives and make your own decision. Uh, I get passionate about it because I have what I feel a certain way. You feel the opposite, and that's fine. Opposites attract. Like I said, we could probably do some amazing work together. And and who, who knows? I write a book one day. This fool might be like, oh, now's my chance to pick apart Johnny Arcade's first book. You know, and uh, I look forward to the day. You know, um, I'm just saying, I, I don't want people to speculate or assume that the things that i'm saying are just outlandish or like where is he coming from with this stuff i want you to understand that it, it was a hunch like i found this stuff in these books and i i reacted i reacted instead of and, and i did put a lot of thought in how i was going to approach it and whatnot and like i said I, I feel my initial um videos were attacking i don't want to come off as attacking i want to come off as revealing and um I just, uh, I just want to make that clear. I, I, I want to make it clear that I'm here for a pod. This is supposed to be a positive situation. I just found it like, again, I didn't want to assume that I would, because even I was questioning my own content. And I want to make sure that before I went down this rabbit hole of revealing all these different books and what I find to be disturbing in them, that I'm not just looking into it too much. I wanted to reassure myself for my own sanity, that I'm not just coming up with this stuff just because. Because I got nothing better to do. Because there's definitely a lot of people with nothing better to do that go out of their way to harm other people. And that's not what this is at all. That's not what this is at all. Um, I just, I found this information in the books and it led me to research further before I just continued going down that road. And again, attacking. I don't want to attack. I'm just bringing up what I, it's like, to me, I've always loved puzzles and I always wanted a decoder ring out of the Cracker Jack box. Never got one, you know, but stuff like that. Sudoku puzzle, puzzle. It's a puzzle. What, reading these books and this stuff coming out, it's like a puzzle. It's like, where's Waldo? And it becomes fun. It is kind of fun because you find something, you open it, and there's stuff that if I look deep, I'd probably find some even darker stuff. I just, I just see what jumps out at me. And... If anything does jump out at me initially, um, then I look a little further. And if 
more jumps out and in which most cases, if not all, uh, it does, um, I, I see what else I'll find. Um, and, and there's a lot, again, when I go to the library, just to pick out books to not necessarily to do this, just to find good books to read my son, I, I find myself like, damn, man, like, there's always something. Now, some books have significantly more than others some just have like maybe one just overall bad message that i don't want to read to him uh so i put a lot of books back and it's sad it's sad and then even if i want to i end up buying him new books um which kind of defeats the whole purpose of a library uh, but i find myself like standing in target and walmart like looking through all these kids books for like an hour before i can pick one out to get them um just to make sure you know, um, it, I don't know, it's sad, but, um, at the same time, it is what it is. It is what it is, but at least I'm aware of it now so I can take the proper steps moving forward. So that wraps it up for this video. It went way longer than I thought. I thought I did a pretty good job though of actually cutting it down considering I, I did like a dry run of this previously and it went so long and I'm like, how am I ever going to do this? So now I'm going to be editing it a little bit. There was some technical difficulties. I had some alarms going off, some reminders and it chopped up the video a couple times. So there will be a few edits in this, but that's okay. I'm going to be showing the screen and everything and whatnot, but hope you like this, uh, this video. Thank you for watching. Hope everything is is resonating. If not, it, it, again, I don't. I'm not here to offend anyone. So if you are offended by this, please just just ignore the, the future posts. Uh, you know, unsubscribe or whatever. I'd hate to see you go, but at the same time, this isn't for everybody, and I and I understand that this isn't for everybody. And uh, I I do promise having varied stuff in the beginning uh, down the road again uh, i like keeping it kind of random with the stuff that i do but this is a focus of mine because how, of how important it is to me and how passionate i am about it and i think this is like a, a calling for me to get this information out it's just like all the other bs that we're all surrounded by every day uh indoctrinated by just completely blind and oblivious to what's going on and uh, this is just one other aspect of that mind control uh, that, that we're all being susceptible to. And as you can see, it starts at the root uh, with our children at the very beginning of their existence. So I love you all. God bless. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I look forward to meeting with you all again. Thank you so much. Peace.